critic, internet, internet rap critic. Um, thank you for filling in tonight, man. I know it was last minute. I appreciate it very much. That's all right, man. I, we've been trying to do this for a while anyway, man. Yeah, every time you've been like busy with something, but tonight, <laughs> the stars aligned. Here yeah. you are. So how you been, man? I'm chilling. Maybe I should put some better lighting. Is that good? That's good. Uh, you see me? All we right. see. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Graduated from school, you know. Oh. They just got me my diploma today. Wait, so. didn't they get, why did, didn't, did he have like a graduation? Yeah, I did. And, and here's the funny thing. So <laughs> on the day of graduation, I go there and they have these big folders. Matter of fact, let me see if I can find it. Uh, <laughs> they, they gave us these big folders and they said, your, uh, your, you know, certificate of graduation isn't in there. It's just, it's just a picture of a turtle, but we'll get it to you. It's a <laughs> picture. Wait, it's a picture of a turtle? Yeah, yeah. Whoa, 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 what? Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> unbelievable. Unbelievable. So I'm like... It's a picture of a turtle? What? <laughs> and so fuck? I, I, I look in there and I figure it out. Sure enough, there's a picture of a turtle. What? And, and so they say, yeah, we'll be mailing it to you. I was like, oh, wait, but hold on a minute. When it came from time for me to do my homework, I didn't, I didn't get to mail that shit to you later. I needed that up front. Oh, when it came time to, uh, you know, when I needed to pay for this, that, and the third. No, I needed to give you that up front. But my fucking diploma. Oh, no, I can wait a couple months for that. I literally just got it. I graduated in freaking May. <laughs> yeah, I was going to give you my thesis, but I don't have it. So here's a picture of a turtle. <laughs> that's that's what we're going to go with here. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm going to try to find this. There's a picture of a turtle. Jess! <laughs> Live, everybody! Let me see it. Oh, <laughs> I have to have saved it. There's no way I wanted to throw that out. Well, of course, you know, because we're going in for a job. They're, the first thing they're going to ask you for <laughs> is your picture of a turtle. <laughs> you know? They're, they're going to want to. They're going to wait. Want to make sure you have an official picture of a turtle from an accredited university. <laughs> Hold on, just a second. <laughs> yeah. Um. Hey, Grady, come here. We're waiting on a turtle. You have to fill in. You have to be adorable. Be adorable. I want, the pe I want the people to see this. What the education system decided to give to me. <laughs> where, where What'd she it? do with it? <laughs> Jesus Hi, Christ. Hi. What the <laughs> fuck is going on? He's, apparently, he's still looking for the damn picture. And I'm watching you guys in the other room. And I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> well, either way. Okay, here's the funny thing. No, it it immediately because I know we got to get on with the show. Yeah, but this <laughs> this was the big ass envelope that they gave to me. It just it, it it fills up the screen. That's how huge this thing was, and inside of it was nothing but a picture, picture of, of a, a turtle. turtle. <laughs> and and I was just like, when I first saw it, I just turned to someone. I was like, "Is this a joke?" <laughs> I was like, "Have I been attending like a joke?" <laughs> Is this shit a fucking joke to you, motherfucker? Because <laughs> I was just thinking, like, because my mom came up here, you know? And I'm thinking, like, what the hell are they going to do if my mom goes, like, hey, let's get a picture of you with that diploma, you know? <laughs> like, uh, here you go, mom. <laughs> and my mom was like, is this a fucking joke? <laughs> I, just, I just couldn't. But, like, they told us beforehand. But I just feel so bad for, like, the fucking sap who came in late and was like, all right, I'm ready to go. Let me see that diploma. I've worked so hard for <laughs> It's a picture of Turtle. Yeah, and so they just sent it to us. Well, Not even framed or anything like that. Just rolled up and then, like, here you go. <laughs> and the funny thing is, walking across the stage, you know, they're like, just, you know, don't, don't show it or anything like that. Just, you know, shake my hand and then walk on. I was like, uh... All right, this feels 
like the, I feel like I've been duped right now. Like, <laughs> thanks for the thousands of dollars. Get your ass out of my fucking school. Yeah, but was it a really nice turtle? Uh, it was actually a really nice picture of a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> University of Maryland, yeah. where their school mascot is a freaking turtle. Yeah. So that's that's where that comes in. But yeah, uh. you all have fun with your shenanigans. <laughs> um, I'll be watching in the other room, far, far away. Uh. I've never like, rage thrown it away. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like just as the end, fuck this you turtle. Know, you know, you you put on the facade for the friends and family. You're oh, like, no. oh, it's all good. You know, a joke. And then I'm just like. No, seriously, what the hell? No, I remember what you did with it. In, uh, about a month and a half ago, what? you asked me, where the hell is my diploma? Oh, because they still hadn't sent it to yeah, me Yeah, and they still hadn't sent it to you yet. And I was like, I don't know, what do you want me to do? And then you took the picture and you ripped it. <laughs> Fuck this turtle. <laughs> All right, have fun, guys. Okay. All right, now that we've gotten the shenanigans out of the way, <laughs> let's get the live bit on. Let's get the intro on here. Okay. Each week, Catherine, radio there, audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And um, we're going to start in Georgia this week. Now, there's something a lot of us in the reviewer community like to joke about a lot, and that's saying, What would we do if we won the lottery? In fact, a lot of people like to say, what would we do if we won the lottery? It'd be like, I buy a big house, let all my friends live there, and make all sorts of videos and stuff. Well, one guy in Georgia won the lottery, and, and, and he kind of... On the plus side, he tried to invest in his own business. On the downside, I'll set it, it's on, it's on your... Uh, I, I sent that to your uh, Twitter DM. It should be there. On the downside was the business he attempted to invest in. Lotto winner bought, sold crystal meth. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. Like, people usually resort to drugs as sort of like a, I don't have a choice sort of thing. Yeah. When you have three million dollars, you won at life. Like you're good. You don't need to get involved with any illegal activities anymore. <laughs> South Georgia man used his three million dollar lottery winnings to buy crystal meth for resale. Ronnie Music Jr. 45. Grady, do you mind? Grady, do you have to right now be be Scratching your scratching thing. Do you mind? <laughs> Don't yell at me. Stop. Knock that shit off. I'm trying to do a show here. Ronnie, Mu Ronnie Music Jr., 45, of Waycross, pled guilty last week in federal court to trafficking, to drug trafficking and firearms. Um... Defended Music decided to test his luck by sinking millions of dollars of lottery winnings into the purchase and sale of crystal meth. Uh, Agent sees more than one million dollars worth of meth, firearms, and Grady. And, and Grady? He's trying to start his other scratching post right now. Can you not? You couldn't have done that earlier. Um, one million dollars of meth, firearms, and thousands of rounds of ammunition multiple vehicles, and more than $600,000 in cash as part of the case. Wow. Because <laughs> the first thing I'm doing when I get my lottery check is I'm going out and buying a million dollars of meth. I don't... You don't need to... Like, what, what... Is it like one of those things where it's just like, Selling meth, meth is just like his passion. He's <laughs> like, oh man. <laughs> he just can't stay away too long, you know? He had to have the artisanal meth, was what he had to do. <laughs> you know? Oh my God. I, and did he, I'm, I'm trying to wonder, did he know anything about the professional meth trade or did he just think, well, it's meth, how hard could it be? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure most people who, who sold meth haven't got arrested yet, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah. The bad guy was doing it pretty good. 
You're not I'm Walter. Again. I didn't see the finale yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're not Walter White, motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, and you gotta know, once he got into prison, everybody's just looking at him like, you are the biggest dumb motherfucker. <laughs> like, yeah, you won at life. Yeah, you're done. You're at the end of the game of life where you just have to go to either the retirement settlement or the other thing and just spend your money. I mean, what if, are you doing? Had he taken even half of that $3 million <laughs> and invested it, he could have made way more money that he could have made selling meth. And also, they don't send you to jail for that. You know, it'd be really funny if like, he starts, is like, yeah, I'm gonna go into selling meth, multiply my money like three times. And then you find out like, drug sales for meth aren't even that high. <laughs> like, yeah. He just got tricked into the, the assumed glamorous world of meth dealing. And it's just like, oh yeah, no, that drug's been on the, on the downswing for the last 20 years. <laughs> It turns out it hasn't had that great of PR. <laughs> it just, uh, yeah, it's you, you, it's it's first you get the cocaine, then you get the money, not the other way around. <laughs> when, when you have the money, you don't need the cocaine. <laughs> you're doing the movie bad. You're doing Scarface backwards. <laughs> it's not how that works. It somehow ends up like a bomb in Puerto Rico. Like, how did I get here? <laughs> Oh, speaking of Spanish, we have a one another wonderful story, and it's Florida. So you know, um, oh, okay. There's I, I have seen the term reverse racism, which is is oh you're already sitting there going oh no. <laughs> No, 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 please, no. <laughs> Which is what it, that, that is one of the stupidest concepts, and I'll inform you guys right now if you're watching the first time, reverse racism does not exist because racism is a structural disenfranchisement of a minority race. You cannot, you can be bigoted, but it does not work the other fucking... <laughs> well, someone didn't get the fucking memo. This one comes from uh, Florida. Uh. Um... Teacher who can't speak Spanish sues after failing to get Spanish teaching post. Florida teacher who speaks no Spanish is suing her employer for discrimination after the school rejected her for a job that required teaching an hour of Spanish per day. Third grade teacher Tracy Rossner filed a federal employment discrimination uh, against the Miami-Dade County School Board claiming that her race, white, prevented her from getting the job. <laughs> After a decade working at Coral Reef Elementary, Rosner requested last year to teach reading and language arts to students in the Extended Foreign Language Program, a track that allows students to learn a language other than English for an hour per day. The school rejected her request because it requires that reading and language arts instructor of the EFL program speak Spanish. Yeah. That, that's not a you're white thing. That's a you do not speak the language thing. Like what? Even better. Rosner said the school could have given her the position and had another instructor teach the Spanish component. What the hell would you be doing? I did what the fuck? <laughs> Wait a minute, you want I'll us to be here collecting the check. <laughs> you want us to hire you to do a job that you were not qualified for and then hire someone else to do the job that we hired you to do. You know there's a sort of skipping the middleman that we can do here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean my motherfucker. That's that's like trying to go and be a truck driver. And you have no idea how the fuck to drive a truck. And they say, no, you cannot be a truck driver. And you say, that's racist. And something's missing there. <laughs> like, it's not like they said, you are not of Spanish descent, so you cannot do this job. No, they're, you literally are, aren't able, capable of doing the thing that is required to teach other people how to do the thing. We have, we have a vice presidential candidate right now, perfectly fluent in Spanish. <laughs> it's not because you're white, lady. It's because you can't. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my goodness. You know what's funny? Oh, please. If people complain about affirmative action. <laughs> I know. Mother, this well, is... <laughs> you, don't want those, you don't want those black people doing those jobs that, I mean, they're qualified to do, but someone who might be slightly as qualified, but is of a different race, to get the, uh, the nuances of that. I, I don't understand how that works, but I know that that black guy isn't qualified for that job. But this shit. <laughs> oh, the fuck? Language. Oh, re reverse racism. Ain't no other explanation. <laughs> you don't know how to do this shit, you stupid person. <laughs> uh, we have we have even more more stupid shit. This one comes from uh, Norwalk. Uh, Norwalk? Is that how you say it? Norwalk? How does it spell? It's spelled Norwalk. I, I'm I, I, <laughs> I'm just so used to words tricking me on this show. I pronounce things the way I see them. And no, no, it's a lie. It's not pronounced that way. So Norwalk. Um, have you ever had a completely horrific roommate? Uh, yeah. Yes. What's your worst roommate? Uh, <laughs> well, it was a little recent, so I, I'm kind of... I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> Jeez. Cause I'm still Facebook friends with them. <laughs> My worst one, I was roommate, I, I was rooming with a friend of a friend, and I drank the last of the milk in the fridge, so he punched a hole in the wall. What the hell? And we were renting. Oh no. So that was that was fantastic. But this guy kind of goes one past that. And I send you the story. Okay. Man brandishes sword at ex-roommate over pizza rolls. <laughs> Norwalk man is accused of brandishing a sword at his ex-roommate when he was retrieving some food. <laughs> Travis C. Vatarella, 20, uh, was charged with aggravated menacing. The victim was a former roommate who had moved out. The man returned to the Northwest Street apartment to retrieve his belongings. O'Hara said the victim was putting some items, which included pizza rolls, into a box. <laughs> when Vatarella reportedly brandished the sword, and this quote is amazing, he said, Leave my fucking pizza rolls alone and pull the sword. Okay, so I, I like how the thing that he's being charged with is, what did it say? Aggravated menacing? Menacing, yes. What? <laughs> like, he was just holding it menacingly. Yes, yeah, like, Is that what was happening? That is when you take a lethal object and and you, you don't actually hit them, but you are using it in a threatening manner in order to compel them. Okay. That's not legal. You yeah, can't yeah, do that. Of course. You can't do that shit. But over, of all the fucking things, over pizza roll. No, there are, there is no, 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 there's not a, I'm trying to think, oh, maybe if it was, it's like, no, not even then. What? Maybe if it was like <laughs> some, a, a special type of fudge cookie that <laughs> your mom made when you were six years old, and she never made them after that year, but they were the sweetest things you've ever had, and then she finally made them for like your graduation year, and she gave them to you. And then someone was trying to take him. Okay, yeah, I can see that. All right, get your get your sword. You know, whatever. But this this is this is one of those those transactional sort of things. It's the minute you do, it's you have to think: Am I willing to go to jail for this? <laughs> because you have to be in jail, and someone's going to ask you why are you in jail, and you're going to say pizza rolls, and it's all downhill from there. But it's, you know, the thing about, like, did he not know that they make more pizza rolls? I just think it's just, you, you <laughs> want to think they were the last ones? Go to the store. There yeah, are, yeah. there are pizza rolls. So many, so many. You could, you could have your pick of the pizza. Why is, and a, a, is this a, like a normal thing you do on a regular basis? Is you, <laughs> just brandish swords in front of people with things that you want. Yeah. That's not good. Maybe like 1,400 years ago, that would be a thing. <laughs> That's not right now. You can't hit this Game of Thrones shit. 
It's all well and good on HBO. It doesn't play out so good in the really real world. Yeah. They don't like that. That's not how that works. Oh, okay. Now this next one, this is this will take you a second to get to. Because it, it seems a little bit like one of our stories to begin with, but we have to get a little into it as we find this one out. This comes from uh from again, Florida. A lot of Florida this week. Um and it's Cops Bust Man with World's Greatest Alias. Now, this is Jeffrey Forrest Poole. Uh, he was arrested early yesterday morning when Florida cops went to his Largo home to investigate domestic disturbance. Uh, when they came to his house, eg uh, Poole exited the residence and according to a criminal complaint said, I will beat every cop's ass. So he's already in a bad place right there. That, that's, <laughs> that's not a good place to start with the cops. Um, then raise his right fist, begin to extend it. He is arrested. Now, you're like, well, okay, that's kind of stupid, but why is that on the show? You have to click down where it says view the document. Because this guy, let me introduce you. He's known on the street. Where? Come on. Come on. Load. Oh, please load. Is it loading for you? Yes. Come on, load. <laughs> oh, I want to show everybody. Okay. All right. All right. Should I just say it? His street alias. Please let us know. His street alias is Dickface Johnson. <laughs> they call me Dickface. <laughs> Dickface Johnson. <laughs> the fucking Dick Tracy villain. I was, you know, you you remember they had stuff like you know you had like Larry the Knife, <laughs> Johnny the Nail, stuff that like it comes sort of implies. Little Nicky, shit like that. But Dickface Johnson, <laughs> he's walking down the street, greeting his crew. He's like, "What up?" They're like, "What up, Dickface?" <laughs> and this is what he wanted to be called. <laughs> like, it's like, "Yo, yo, don't mess with him. That's Dickface Johnson." <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to know how he got that name. <laughs> were there options? And he he just sort of like, we're gonna call you uh, Tony the Rock. No, no, that's that's not really me. Uh, uh, Bloody Tom. No, no. Well, we still have Dick Face. That is me. That's my life, yo. That's my story. Because every victim I leave, I, I I draw a little I draw a little marker of a dick on his face. <laughs> That's his signature. <laughs> That's his signature. He just leaves, just draws dicks on people. Dick face strikes again. <laughs> Wolverine sideburns and shit. <laughs> oh man, it's the dick face killer. <laughs> <laughs> I read that and I just about died. <laughs> I, I like how on the site though, they don't tell you what it's No, name. no, you have to. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see, can I get it to come up? Uh, there it is. There. Now everybody can see it and see I'm not lying. There it is. Dick face alias Dick face Johnson, <laughs> the dread Dick face. <laughs> oh, all right, let's move right along. Um, so we have all driven with a GPS, and and I have a a certain policy which is never trust the talkie box okay. because it lies to you. Yes, it does. I have been in positions where I've had a GPS try to drive me into a grove of trees, insisting there's a, there's a road there. <laughs> Don't be a pussy. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had them try to drive me into a lake. I I So I've learned this next guy, however, was not quite so, shall we say, discerning when it came to 
GPS directions. And the picture is amazing. GPS tells driver to turn around. Car ends up almost vertical. Let's see if I can make that any bigger because that is that is fantastic. Oh, come on, picture. There it is. There you can see. Wait, what? What did he do? It's a. <laughs> I don't know. And he just, but it was just like, turn around. And he was just like, okay, I'll do that right now. And just turned right at the, just. Police in Vermont say a car ended up almost vertical when the driver swerved quickly in response to her GPS ordering her to turn around. <laughs> <laughs> the car was almost vertically suspended on guy wires attached to a utility pole. Police say 30-year-old Nabilia Altman of uh, Dorchester, Massachusetts was heading west on Route 4 when she passed her intended de destination. The GPS gave sudden directions to turn around. Police say Altahen reacted quickly to the instructions, <laughs> leaving the road at a significant enough speed to propel the vehicle up the wires. You know what would be funny? <laughs> if, if you were thinking, like, turn the car around, what if he was like, turn around? And she's like, what's back there? <laughs> Look, when the GPS tells you something, it's not like there's a gun to your head. You don't have to do that shit immediately. Assess the situation. It's not like, it's not like, fuck me, I must. If you miss your turn, you'll have another chance, I promise. <laughs> that shit would be fucking hilarious, though. Turn around. What's behind me? <laughs> You, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there th looking at this. The fire department, when they showed up, must have been like, can you believe this shit? <laughs> How do you do this? How do you get the, How do they get the car down? <laughs> I'm amazed it didn't pull down the telephone pole. Yeah, actually. That could have been just an utter fucking disaster. Oh, my God. Yeah, that could have this could have gone a lot worse. <laughs> hey, everybody driving down the highway is just staring at you. <laughs> Dumbass. How did you do that? I'm I oh, you know every person going like she fucked up on the GPS, didn't she? <laughs> I'm both disappointed and impressed because wow. <laughs> that's that's magical right there. Yeah. State Farm don't cover that. No. No, they do not. Like a good neighbor, State Farm... No, fuck you, I'm out. <laughs> uh, uh This is not my department. You call someone else. This is enough. Call farmers and shit. We ain't doing this. Oh, uh, our last one is a Walmart story. Yay. West Virginia. Okay. Oh, God. <sighs> Trying to find a way to seg into this. Um, have you had, ever had a pet? Like a yeah, dog? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever took it with you in a car? Uh-huh. Have you ever left him in the car? Um, Not for a significant amount of time, no. Have you ever left him in the car with the keys in the engine? <laughs> with the car running? Because that's what happened. Oh, no. Woman leaves dogs in car. Dogs crash into Walmart. <laughs> a pair of dogs who were left in a car with the motor still running <laughs> crashed into a Walmart. Authority said something. They're adorable. They smashed right the fucking into a Walmart. <laughs> the dogs are fine. The dogs are fine. Elderly woman left her two dogs. To a secret life of pets. <laughs> Elderly woman left her two dogs in the car. She went shopping at Walmart in Wayne, West Virginia. The dog somehow managed to crash the car into the building. No people or dogs were hurt. There was only minimal damage to the car in the building. Shoppers told the WSAV they were surprised when they saw a dog driving the car. I'm going to read that again. 
<laughs> Shoppers told WSAZ they were surprised when they saw a dog driving the car. Just... <laughs> would you... What other reaction would you have? I just, just imagine, like, someone just going about their day, just looking and just, just seeing it happen and just... Well, I guess the end times are here. Because <laughs> you know the dog was, like, right in that perfect position, just looked over. <laughs> I, I can only imagine the dogs were enjoying the hell out of themselves because they're those little yappy dogs. Yeah, yeah. They were oh, probably. My God, my grandma, uh, my great grandma used to have one of those dogs. I don't know if she still does because I do not want to go over to her house after I became the legal age to decide what I where I could go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you know when you have to go over to a relative's house and like they're older, so they don't really know what to do with kids, so they're just like sit here and don't touch anything. And then, you know, you have that dog just, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and, you know, you think it's like, oh, I, if I stay here for a while, they'll get used to me. But two hours later, oh, 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 oh. It's like, you know what? Maybe I'll just, I, can I just go outside? Can I do anything but be here right now? Because okay. obviously I'm not wanted. <laughs> now imagine that, but driving a car into a Walmart. Because <laughs> oh, I... I understand she wanted to leave the car running so that the AC would be on. I get that, lady. I appreciate this, but maybe, possibly, the other option would be leave the dogs at home. Yeah, what the fuck do the dogs need to be there now for? Because you're not taking them into the Walmart. <laughs> and they're not going to do anything useful in the car. In fact, they're going to do the opposite of useful in the car. Why did you bring the dogs? The thing is, it's, it's an elderly woman, and I, and I should have expected it. You know, it's probably an older lady. Uh, doesn't doesn't get a lot of, you know, people coming over, you know? So all she has is her dogs. And so she thinks to herself, man, the one time when I'm really not alone, uh, the one time where I'm really alone is when I'm going out to get stuff. So maybe I should just not be alone for that little trip. You know, just bring the animals with me. Why leave them at home? The dog doesn't <laughs> want to go to Walmart. I'm telling you, the dog will have absolutely no. It's it's like it'll pee on some stuff and that's it. <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. That's but <laughs> do you have to? Under, this is probably the best day of these dogs' life. <laughs> they 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 were probably like, this is amazing. I want to do this again. They are becoming sentient. <laughs> They're driving our cars. Because <laughs> after years... Oh, have a construction. After years and years of doing this shit, you show me a dog driving a car, I'm like, okay. That's... <laughs> I guess that's a part of reality. I am so desensitized at this point. I'm like, yeah, I'll accept that. I've seen... F you You don't know what I've seen. You don't You don't know. I, I, guess, I guess the first thing we've learned tonight... If there is no this reason for the dogs to be with you, leave the puppies at home. Yeah. Because otherwise they will drive your car into the Walmart and you are going to scare and confuse a lot of people. <laughs> We've learned this week that you don't have to immediately react to the GPS. <laughs> it's not like you're going to get points off or anything. <laughs> Although I will say, have you ever like not d d done when the GPS said, and then it does that rerouting, and then maybe it's just me, but the GPS starts to sound really snippy with my ass. <laughs> Cause it's like I expect it to say, "Make a left, rerouting, rerouting, make the next left, dumbass, make the next left." It's like it's not happy with me. But that's okay, because it's just a little disembodied voice. It doesn't control you. <laughs> we, we've learned that there is a human being on this planet who willingly wanted to be known in his criminal enterprises as Dickface Johnson. Yeah. You know... What? Should have just gone with Dickface McGee. Like, why not? Dickface McGee. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine a rap... You know, a rap artist 
<laughs> trying to like be down with get some street street cred and be like, I'm Dick Face Johnson. That's Yo, it's the killer man, aka Dick Face McGee. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not once again. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think he's gonna be drawing a lot of crowds with that one. <laughs> hey, hey, there is a rap uh group called Nine Inch Dicks. So Yep. Look that one up. I didn't want to know that. <laughs> Why do I, well, I know that now. I can't not know that now. Yep, that's a part of your life. I don't want to know. Why did... That occupies space in your brain now. You're the devil. <laughs> They're featured on a Snoop Dogg song, no less. We've learned that if your roommate won't give you your pizza rolls, go buy more pizza rolls, put the sword down. <laughs> To put the put the fucking st We've learned that no, sometimes you're not being discriminated against. You're just not competent. <laughs> That's kind of an important element of doing a job. To be able to do the fucking job. Uh, and finally we learned if you've won the lottery, stop. You're done. <laughs> Oh, that shit, man. I'm not gonna lie. That first story made me mad. I know. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm struggling with. I gotta keep all this shit, all the money I gotta waste for the to make sure that the this stays on. And then, and you got three million, and you're you're in jail. Just, just give it to me. Just give it to me. All you stupid people with your money out there. I, just a fool in his a fool in his gold <laughs> needs to give it to me. So you could be a slightly smarter person. If he if he'd given you a million three million dollars instead of buying meth, he would still not have the three million dollars, but he would not be in jail. He would not be in jail, owing because you know he spent all of the money on on the meth and stuff, thinking, oh man, this is gonna return tenfold, and then like immediately the police were like yeah no you got all this myth so now you're going to jail and you know they're probably going to be like oh well at least you still have the other half of the three million dollars that you can you know use for court fees right no oh shit they can they can claim all this and here's the worst part the people he bought that meth from they gonna not be happy <laughs> Oh, good lord. It's going to be I, Gus and those twin motherfuckers from Breaking Bad are going to come. <laughs> Dude, I whenever I, I, I hear stories about people who just, just fell into money, just fell into it, and then immediately fell out of it, it just makes me, it's just like, it's, universe, come on, like, I'll do something with that. Like, please, can I get that luck too? Come on now. Is it, do you just want to give luck to people who will fuck it up? Is that just what you do? Is that what you do, luck? Huh? Yes. Yes. Bastard. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for this week. <laughs> Still cursing about it. <laughs> I'm so angry. <laughs> Meanwhile, I spend such and such thousand dollars on this fucking degree where all I get is a turtle. <laughs> Three million dollars. But it was a nice turtle, though. <laughs> Are you joking me?